Speaking of uh, an interesting contest on Saturday, how about the Detroit Red Wings and Toronto Maple Leafs dialing it back to 1984 with some of this action, a 10-7 game that uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs end up prevailing in. And I think, you know, when you look at the surface, it's easy to kind of push that game aside and say 17 goals in one game. Come on, how often does that happen? Mm -hmm. To me, Chris, I think it speaks to a larger issue that exists with the Toronto Maple Leafs and their goaltending. So my question to you is, on a 1 to 10 scale, when you look at the Maple Leafs and their stats, these are the numbers since January 1st. If you stretch back even further since December 7th, Jack Campbell has an 890 save percentage. A lot of his the weaknesses in his game have been masked over by the fact that they've somehow found a way to escape or, or outscore some of their issues in net on a 1 to 10 scale. What is your level of concern for the Leafs and their goaltending? Oh, boy. Uh, it's got to be approaching a 6 or a 7. I mean, Jack Campbell started off the season so well, um, you know, just looked like he had answered all of the Leafs prayers and nets, but you know, the numbers you're showing now, these are not trends that you want to see as you head toward the playoffs for either goalie. I mean, seeing the highlights from that game, I thought it was watching an exhibition game between the Argos and the Lions, right? I mean, it, uh, it's pretty wild. I think, I think the Leafs are going to have to seriously think about whether these two guys can carry them uh, in the playoffs or whether they need to, to look at another option um you know campbell has shown that he is capable but again the trend is going the wrong way man grain elevators argos i mean we're like a <laughs> pinball clemens reference away from the canadian trifecta here um you know it, it's interesting to to take a look at the leafs and their goaltending i i actually i'm much more concerned than you are like i give it a nine out of ten and the reason for that is this they've shown in the past that their scoring at least historically has dried up when you get to the playoffs austin matthews has three goals in his last 12 stanley cup playoff games you can't outrun poor goaltending in the playoffs and maybe this is just a sort of blip on the radar maybe the leafs hope that campbell or Mrazek, one of the two will rebound in time to give them serviceable goaltending they can look at defense uh they can you know potentially try and add some toughness up front or a little bit of hard skill if they're interested. But I think you have to get your goaltending right, or else if you get to the playoffs and you're thinking that you're going to need to score four or five or six in a night to outscore your goaltending, I just don't know that that's a recipe for success. Yeah, Frank, when you look at some of the trade targets in goal that you've identified, um, you know, look at Dallas. You, you could take a player like Holtby or Hudobin uh, just in and around the $2 million mark, and if they were to put Mrazek in the minors and save – you know, 1.125 on his buried charge. It doesn't take an awful lot of extra cap space to bring in one of those guys. So could those be an option for, for Toronto? Maybe. Uh, we'll, we'll see what we'll see whether Kyle Dubas has that, uh, that uh, scale of nervousness that you seem to have for them. Yeah, I, I don't think they're quite there yet, but I, I think it's certainly something that should be building as we're exactly three weeks out from the NHL's trade deadline on March 